I'm Matt. I'm t -Rap. I'm Richard. In this video, we're going to talk about simul parity and itinal parity. Simul pairs organisms are the kind of organisms that reproduce once before they die. And itinal pairs organisms, they have multiple reproductive cycles in their lifetime. Examples of simul pairs organisms are many insects, uh, species of arachnids like spiders, mollusks like um, many species of squids and octopus. Uh, Iteroparous organisms, they have multiple reproductive cycles in their lifetime. So they can have, um, they can copulate and then they can still live to copulate again. And examples of Iteroparous organisms are many mammals, uh, reptiles, and birds, and also many insects, too. Simul parity is a reproductive strategy defined by the death of the organism following a single reproductive event. Often these reproductive events are large and coordinated, so that many or all of the adults of a species reproduce at the same time and subsequently die soon after en masse. The main competitive advantage that organisms gain in adopting a semiparalysis model of reproduction is the potential to increase their fecundity relative to similar iteroparous counterparts significantly. Instead of continuing to invest energy into growth and survivability, adults of semiparalysis species can expend all of their remaining energy on reproduction. By doubling down on a single concerted reproductive event, the organisms can produce higher quality gametes, often in greater numbers than iteroparous species can. The environmental conditions that allow a semiparalysis reproductive strategy to succeed are that, first of all, something is preventing increased survivorship and continued reproductive cycles from being effective over a longer period, such as with the temperature change in winter killing off all the adults of a species, or a requirement that individuals expend their remaining energy to successfully reproduce. Another condition is that because adults both die following the reproductive event, the amount of parental investment in the young offspring must be none in most cases. This is why while semel parity is common among small plants and some invertebrates, it is uncommon among mammals due to generally high maternal care among mammals. The Pacific salmon is a well-known example of semel parity. When adults reach the reproductive age, they expend all of their energy swimming upriver to their spawning grounds from the ocean where they live the rest of their adult lives. Soon after spawning, Adults all die, but their bodies still serve an essential purpose by fertilizing the water with nutrients necessary for an algal bloom. Zooplankton then feeds on the algae, and young salmon feed on the zooplankton. Semel parity is necessary for Pacific salmon because their energy expenditure as they journey inland makes the continued survivorship significantly less efficient than investing further into fecundity. Aeroparity is a reproductive strategy that involves multiple reproduction events in an organism's life. The main advantage of aeroparity is that they don't expend much energy into reproduction. They are also better tuned to changes in their life, thus giving a fitness benefit for being aeroparous. This results in a lower fecundity of the organism. This is common and can be seen in birds some reptiles, and mammals. This is due to the fact that it has been noted that birds and mammals care for their young. Plants that are iteroparous are larger trees and perennial plants. They provide protections in newer blo blossom trees. It is harder for outside sources to wipe out all the trees and harder for other plants to encroach in the area that they're growing in. Large trees will provide protections from abiotic factors. An example of aeroparity comes in the form of a blue jay. Every spring they come and reproduce throughout the summer, winter, and autumn. The adult bird will care for their nestling as they provide food, warmth, and protection from predators. It can also be seen in mammals. 
and there is a maternal instinct to care for their young and provide for them, but not to the extent of death. It has also been seen in mammals to reproduce more than once in their life. So, in conclusion, what we've learned in this video is that semelparous organisms have increased fecundity at the expense of their longevity. Whereas iteroparous organisms, they have more number of adults living because they live after each reproductive cycle. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's oh my god.